everybody and welcome to today's video in which we are going to cover an interesting theme namely we're going to see how we can create some custom textures for uh, custom parquet now uh, here's the thing whenever you're working with parquet this is something that you might end up getting from your client they want something maybe like this or maybe like this like I said in the beginning we are talking about intricate designs not just the regular designs so maybe even something like this so these are just some examples of what you can find as a parquet or a parquet whatever the right pronunciation is for the type of texture so here we have another one and as you can see these look fairly nice and they're giving uh, they, they can give your entire scene a very nice look so now the issue comes in when you get a client who wants something like this but they have a certain kind of wood in mind or a certain kind of maybe even marble because this uh, way of creating your textures can be applied to marble as well or even any kind of stone so let's see how we can make something like this and to have total control over what kind of wood would be used and what the actual size of this would be so for this so I'm gonna turn this off I'm gonna jump over in max and in short this is what I actually have set up in max it's just one plane with a texture on top of it I basically use this texture but like I said you can use any of these or any texture that you find even something as intricate as this the way that you would make this would be the same all right so let's start from here so I'm gonna go over in my front viewport and here I'm gonna to go to my shapes take a rectangle and try and draw out the outline of this so something like this till about here now here's the thing these guys are always square so let's square them out over here so let's go six six three eight by six three eight and that is going to give us the outline of our parquet texture so now what we need to do is right click on our spline convert to and convert it into an edible spline now i'm going to select my spline and with the outline i'm going to click and drag it inwards until we get it till about here i think and all right And when you're doing this just take into account that uh, the texture might be a bit uh, off it not it might not be taken 80 uh, or 90 degrees from the top so you might have a bit of a deviation here so again try to simply match it up as closely as possible something like well, something like this would work I guess All right, so once we have this, I'm gonna go and just so I don't have to manually go and add in these lines, I'm gonna go and control V and make a copy. That is going to copy our already existing lines. So I'm gonna select my outer line and delete it. And now with the one that I have left, I'm gonna select the edges or the corner vertices, right click and uh, make them into corners. This is going to allow me to chamfer this and get these lines. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Now, again, I'm gonna select this or the first uh, line, control V and make another copy. I don't need the other line for this one as well so now just to get this or the inner part I'm gonna rotate the already existing one for like 45 and now with the scale get it inwards 
till about here. Now here's the important part. You want to make sure that uh, these two lines are really close to each other. So you can uh, control your fine control that by right clicking on the select and uniform scale. And I just like increase the scale till something like this. Then I have to touch exactly too much because this is now we're talking about millimeters. So it really won't make too much of a difference. But like this, it's okay. All right, now, since we already have that, let's do the same thing with uh, the, f the chamfer we did over here. So one more time, control V, copy, select all of the vertices on the edges, make them in the corners, chamfer them, we get that. And again, it's, it's a repetitive uh, workflow, but it gets it done. Now you can do this if you wish. If you wish, you can do the same thing in um, either uh, Coral or um, maybe even fo Photoshop would work as well. But I'm just trying to keep it into Max so you guys can see how to do this in Max because uh, for this, it's not really that com complex, but when you're gonna do with some more um, complex designs, it's a good thing to have your total control in max. All right, so what we have here so far is all of these lines, more or less are um, part of the same design. So I'm gonna go and attach all of these together. There we go, so now we can see them better. And I just need to go and add in the extra lines. I'm gonna right, uh, hold on Control and right click, and choose line from here, from one edge. Hold on Shift when you're dragging out, so it's a straight line to about here. Click, hold on Shift to the other side. Click, and let's do the same thing here. Hold on Shift. Click, click, hold on, shift, to down. Okay. And the same thing, more or less, for this part. Till about here. And again from here. I'm gonna zoom in, make sure that these are touching. They are overlapping, that's good this one as well. All right, awesome. All right, now I'm gonna go and attach both of these together. So this, the ones on the edge. Um, and from here, I'm gonna hit on my mirror so I can use it on the Y axis or here, just make it a copy. Put it on this side. Make sure they're touching, yes they are. It's okay on the top as well, select them both. And now mirror them on the Y. Again, a copy and move it downwards. That is going to help us get that look. Right now, move it upwards a bit, right click. until about here. This should work. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now, I'm gonna attach all of them again. I just wanna have them all part of the same design so I can see it better. And, all right, I can reuse this, so hold on Shift and drag it downwards, like this. Select these, move them upwards. So we just need them to slightly touch. We're not gonna weld them together or anything, we just need them to overlap a bit. All right, now we have those, so the only thing that's left to add would probably be these guys over here, but they are really easy to add, so we can just use the snap. So just have my snap toggle on with when I right click, I can see the settings and I have vertex on. 
So snap to the corners so we can get that nice division there. And with this, I think we have all of the lines that we need. Oops, <laughs> except these lines, they're going uh, across. But you know what? I'm actually gonna leave this behind so I can use them later on to tell you how you can fix certain lines that you might miss in your first over uh, overview of your project. So for now, I'm gonna leave those behind and I'm gonna fix them later on, which again is gonna uh, let me show you guys how to do it as well. So, all right. Now, everything here is part of, or an outline for what we have here. So, here is the interesting, here is where it starts to get interesting. One of the great things about you, uh, doing this in Max is basically you can go ahead and now scale this and get it to be in the size that you want to. So I'm gonna Alt Q, so I'm isolating my design, and now I'm gonna go over in my utilities. Here, I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna measure, or click on the measure, in case the measure button is not here for any reason, usually it's always here by default, you can find it by clicking on this button over here and find it from the utilities list. So measure, and it's telling me that right now, the dimensions for this is 638 by 638, which was more or less the, the size of the plane that I used for my texture, which is way too big. We don't want this to be so big. So let's take a look at the image. Now, something like this would probably be somewhere between 30 and 50 centimeters. So let's, let's try with 50. It's a nice rounded, uh, round number. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna choose my uniform scale. I'm gonna right click on it. Now here's what you need to uh, always, and I do mean always make sure you don't screw up. And this is the scale you see here. When you're using uh, scale and you're using uh, any kind of modeling, you want to make sure that these numbers are always 100. Otherwise, all of the other um, numbers that you're going to use or any, any sizes are going to be offset and not, they're not going to be correct. So what I want to do here is make this from 638, make it down to 50 centimeters. So I'm going to click here and drag it downwards till it gets about 50. All right, we got it to 49.76, just a tiny bit more. All right, 50.013. All right, so this is great. But now the problem that we are left with is that my absolute local is at 7.839% of what it used to be. And uh, like we said, we want to have this at 100%. So that, that when, we, when we use other options, they don't get screwed up. And this is how you fix this. Every time after you use scale, what you want to do is click reset, reset X form right here and click on reset selected. What this does is over here in the modify, it adds this X form modifier. And as you can see here now, all of them are no longer at um, 6%, they're back to 100. So I'm gonna right click and I'm going to, to convert this as a spline. So here we go. Now our spline is with a measurement of 50 centimeters. And once we have that, I'm gonna convert this to a black color, give it a black color and I'm going to press the 8 button or simply go over to the rendering, choose environment, and make my environment white. By default, it's black, just scroll it down as white. Now, what this is going to allow me is once I uh, render out a template, it's going to be black. Uh, lines on a white background. So for this, I'm gonna press F10. From here, 
I'm gonna choose a size of well, you can either go one to, uh, 1024 or 2048 by 2048, or you can even go higher, but I think for this, uh, 2K resolution would be more than enough. And the reason why I'm using 248 instead of just 2000 is that if you choose to use your textures later on in a game engine like Unreal, it won't uh, make any problems with the power of two. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, don't even sweat it, you will not be affected. So I'm going to go 2048 by 2048, and for my render, I have the default scanline render. I don't need V-Ray for this. Now I'm going to press Shift F, and it's going to show me the save frame. So I'm going to try to frame it more or less here, let's zoom out a bit. Don't have to be exact, but we just wanted to have as much as we can from the from here. So, take a look what happens now. I mean, we've placed it uh, so the lines are black. We've set it up. We have a white background. See what happens when I click the render production. We get this white uh, background. So we we uh, we can't see anything from. Our lines. The reason for this is that we, in, before we do anything else, we want to go over in the rendering and enable it in renderer and in, enable it in viewport. Now, the great thing about this is now we actually have a place in which we can control how big this space between all of our planks is going to be. As you can see, in between all of these planks, we have this little space. Now this little space is going to be defined by this parameters right here. So we can try like 0.1, which would give us like one millimeter uh, space, but I think that might be a bit bigger. So let's try with zero points. I let's go 0.5 like this. And what we are left with is now this and as soon as I re-render now, this is what I end up with. As you can see, I have this white background and this nice black lines. And if I zoom in, I can see that they go over to the edge. Make sure everything is fine. If everything is touching, then I'm simply gonna go ahead and save the image. And here I'm gonna call this temp template parquet or parquet, and I'm gonna save this as a PNG file. And here's the thing: when you're saving it as a PNG file, as soon as you click save, it's going to give you the option to choose to bake in the alpha channel. So all of this whiteness that we have it as a background is basically going to be transparent. So I'm going to press OK. And with this, we have our base for our texture, which we can work on in the second video in Photoshop. And with this, I think that I would uh, cut this video short here. And in the next video, we're going to continue over in Photoshop and finish up the entire design. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, come and join me in the second one where we will continue and finish off our design. So I'll see you guys over there.